Welcome to the second of our Faith at Home videos for church leaders. Faith at Home is about finding God together in the everyday parts of life. And we're focusing on practical ideas that families can try out at home together to pause, to pray, and make space to talk. Each week has a different theme, and this week's theme is love. We'll hear some perspectives from young people on the place of love in their faith and what they find helpful in deepening their grasp of God's love. We'll get some top tips on how church leaders can encourage parenting for faith. We'll share practical ideas on how to encourage good conversations and relationships as a way of sharing God's love with those around us. But let's start by listening to Kezia and Anya from Archbishop Blanche School in Liverpool with some of their thoughts on the importance of love in faith. Hi, my name is Kezia and my name is Anya and we are both very grateful to live in a community full of love and to be supported in everything that we do. Whatever we're doing, from dance or skateboarding or hockey to schoolwork, they are always there to love, support and help us. Love is unconditional and is constant. Although we can go through patches in life when it feels like we are climbing a mountain, no matter how hard and tough it gets, we have those who love us to help us persevere. Currently, during this pandemic, many people around the country and the world are showing others love, from the NHS staff to the bin collectors, those delivering food, who we show our love for each Thursday night. As it says in our school vision statement and 1 John chapter 3, verse 18, let us not love with words or speech, but in actions and in truth. Our community and our loved ones live this in their daily lives, for example, my grandma who is making face masks for the local care home and for people who live around her. And my mum helps by going shopping for those who are unable. And our school has been supporting its community during these difficult times. It is at times like this that it is more important than ever to show up in our world, communities and families. As through love and our actions we are able to grow together and strength and support one another. It's good to get young people talking about their faith and their own understandings and experiences. Research shows that many parents have reservations about having such conversations with their kids. One reason for this is a lack of confidence, a concern that they might say the wrong thing. Another factor is the desire to leave decisions about faith open to their children, to let them decide. The interesting thing though is that children and young people report that parents and caregivers are the number one influences of their faith. So the lack of opportunity to talk about faith at home can leave the impression that exploring and owning our own faith isn't important. Parenting for Faith was set up to find ways to make such conversations a more natural part of our homes. Here's Rachel Turner with her top tips on how we as church leaders can be more proactive in supporting and encouraging parents. We all want parents to be able to step into their role as people who can help their children meet and know God at home. But many parents and carers are quite unconfident, sometimes because they don't feel they're expert of Christian enough or that they don't feel confident enough to start those conversations. And that means they often hold themselves back. One of the most powerful things we can do as church leaders is to speak key truths into these parents and carers' minds that they may feel confident and competent to do this. Here are nine key truths that parents need to hear from us church leaders. Number one, God has given you a place of significant influence in the spiritual lives of your children. Influence flows through connection, and you as parents have the most connection with your children out of anybody. Also, what kids need to have is someone in their lives showing them how ordinary everyday life with God looks. God has given you that influence. Number two, the church cannot be as effective at this as you can. You know your child better than church does, and you have so many more hours with your children than church ever could. Number three, God knows what parenting is like. 
He knows that parenting is exhausting and tiring and stressful, and yet he still designed children's discipleship to happen in the home, which means just as you are, you can do it well. Number four, what children need to see most is to see what a real relationship with God looks like up close and in the everyday. When things are good and bad and boring, that's where God is. He is in those ordinary bits of life and you can show them where God is in all of it. Number five, how you parent for faith will be different from how others do it. You are the expert in your own child and it will look different from everybody else. There is no one right way of doing it, just your way. Number six, you are already doing lots of useful and significant spiritual discipling. In your everyday life, you are influencing your children's faith more than you think. You're already doing well. Number seven, your relationship with God is a journey. You don't have to, as a parent, be fantastic at all of this. You don't need to be perfect. You being on a journey is a powerful testimony of how God walks alongside of us. Number eight, your children are also on a journey in their relationship with God. Your job as a parent is to help them on their journey and to walk alongside of them. You don't have to be the end goal, just a co-journeyer of faith. And number nine, you are not alone. Us as church leaders, we are here to support you and encourage you and have your back. We are one big community cheering you on and helping you and equipping you. When parents and carers hear these messages from our mouths, from our writing, no matter how we drip feed them into their lives, they can begin to feel like they can do this. They can help their families meet and know God at home and feel supported by us. So grab one or two of these key truths and start dripping it into your parents' lives and ministries and you'll see massive fruit. You can find further insights from Parenting for Faith via our website. You might also be interested in one of Rachel's many books on the topic. You can also find more from Rachel on our weekly videos for parents. With love being core to our faith, encouraging good conversations about emotions and secure relationships just matter full stop. Our partners at HeartSmart work with schools and communities to promote such positive environments. Here's Dave to tell us a little bit more about their work. Hello, I'm Dave. My name's Boris the Robot. And we're here from Boris's Shed. And we're here from an organisation called HeartSmart, which is it's a resource for schools, but actually, do you know what? It's a resource for kids. And so that's why we've made it available for you guys at home. We have five key HeartSmart values. We say don't forget to let love in, which is all about understanding you're important and loved, isn't it, Boris? Yes, everyone is important. Exactly. Uh, we also say too much selfie isn't healthy, and that's about recognising that there's someone else in the room that they're also loved and important. We say don't hold on to what's wrong. What's that about, Boris? That, that is all about forgiveness. Exactly. Forgiveness is a gift for yourself as well as for other people. It means you can keep making powerful choices in the future knowing you've dealt with the past. Fake is a mistake is the fourth heart smart value. And then the last one is no way through isn't true. What's that all about, Boris? It does what it says on the tin. It just means that you just keep being able to have hope and keep looking to the future and keep uh, choosing to find a way through. So um, we've made all these resources available to you to be able to do stuff at home. Just head to www.heartsmart.family. Uh, there's lots of games, films, activities, and we really hope to see you there, don't we, Boris? Yeah, we look forward to seeing you there. There are links to the stories they've mentioned via the website. That's just about it for this week's Faith at Home for Church Leaders. Lastly, we share the contemporary song, The Blessing UK. Of course, we can experience and celebrate God's love through many forms of song worship. So to end this week, we have a different expression of thankfulness of God's love. Maybe there are some budding choristers in your community that this might inspire. As director of the Choir Church Project in Portsmouth, this piece is very dear to my heart as it allows us to celebrate God's love using the same notes 
slightly rearranged in a cathedral setting and also in our school setting.